Thank you. Um, good morning, professor. Uh, good afternoon, professors. So I'm Dorothy Cheng Wai Chong from Dawson Girls School, and today my topic is going to be a, ge a geometric approach to the second non-trivial case of the Erdos Eaters conjecture. So I uh, first I want to apologize because I just had a bio a biology exam today morning. I will have one tomorrow, so my mind is not exactly on mathematics. So if I forget what I say, please forgive me. Um, okay. So the conjecture is basically. For every set of 2 to the power n minus 2 plus 1 points in general position on a plane, uh, there's a subset of n points that form a convex n-gon. And I really like this problem because it's simple and elegant. And well, math is simple and good for uh, beautiful because it's simple and elegant. So uh, let me talk about some known results. The specific ones are uh, f3 equals to 3. f is the lowest number of points in general position to guarantee that uh, there is a convex n-gon. So f3 is equals to 3, which is trivial. f4 is 5. Uh, it's called the happy ending problem, proved by Esther Klein. f5 is equal to 9. Uh, it's actually really special because there are two different proofs, like two different proofs published for this, one in 1970s and one in 1974. And f6 is equal to 17 by Skeeters and Peters in 2006. It's a, compu uh, it's a computer proof. And apparently this Skeeters man devoted his whole life to doing this. OK, so the general results, the lower bound is 2 to the power n minus 2, uh, meaning that there are some constructions in, uh, with 2 to the power minus 2 points, which does not have the convex n-gon uh, proved by, well, the two original proposers in 1961. And the newest upper bound is 2 to the power, well, n plus 4, n to the power 4 over 5, proved by Andrew, Andrew Sook from MIT in 2016, this, is, uh, this year. It's in the April. I was pretty surprised when I saw this because, well, it's a pretty new proof uh, to be in this year. OK, so this problem is a combinatorial geometry problem. And almost all proofs are related are based on combinatorics and coordinate geometry, including the proof of the lower bound, the proof of f6, uh, the computational proof, and the proof of the newest upper bound. So they all considered like caps and cups and coordinates and also different combinations. and uh, I was thinking maybe geometrical approaches or purely geometrical approaches may bring new perspectives to the problem. Actually, I was inspired when I was uh, looking through Andrew Sook's proof in 2016 because there were some very ge geometrical diagrams in it. So I was thinking whether I can do something about it. Uh, so my project is that I proved uh, f5 equal to 9 again using a purely geometrical approach, which is uh, I originally was more ambitious. I wanted to do f6 equals 17 or even more, but then I ran out of time. So uh, terms and notations. The x, y, z configuration means uh, is the convex hull organization of a defined set of points. So for example, the 3, 4, 2 configuration means that there is a convex hull of three points, of nine points. And then inside the three points, there is another subconvex hull of four points. And inside the four points, there are two points. And Fn is the smallest number of general position required to guarantee the existence of a convex n-gon. OK, so uh, theorem, uh, here are a th few theorems that form the basis of my proof. Uh, among any five points in the general position, there exist four points which form a convex quadrilateral, the happy ending problem, which is proved. Uh, the next one. Among any 4-1 configuration, means that four points of a convex hull surrounding one point, uh, the middle one point will form exactly two convex quadrilaterals with three of the four points outside. Uh, so in this case, E would form a convex quadrilateral with A, C, D, and on the other hand, A, B, D. So there are exactly two. Uh, the proof is pretty simple. You just draw a diagonal, and whichever triangle that point is not in, there would be a convex quadrilateral because it's limited by uh, the angle, the angle sizes. Okay, so lemma three point one point three, uh, it says that in for every two points in for, for every four two configuration, we will be able to decide the outer four, uh, divide the outer four points into two groups of two points such that these groups do not fo uh, form a diagonal. For example, in this case, it would be either A, B, and C, D, or A, D, and B, C, such that the middle two points would form a convex quadrilateral with the outer, uh, both of the pairs of points outside. 
The proof is also pretty uh, simple. For example, we first consider a 4-1 configuration with A, B, C, D, and E in the middle. And uh, we divide this A, B, C, D into eight parts like this. So first of all, uh, we suppose that there are no convex pentagons. Because if there are convex pentagons, then well, we, uh, we're done with the problem. So we can't have any points in R1, R2, R3, and R4. So we have S1, S2, S3, and S4 left. And if F is in S1 or S3, then the division would be A, B, and C, D. So E, F, A, B, and E, F, C, D would be convex quadrilaterals. While on the other hand, if it's S2 or S4, then the, the division would be A, D, and B, C. Uh, that is because the angles are again limited by uh, the, line, the lines and the uh, different constraints of the convex hull. Okay, so lemma 3.1.4, it's basically the happy ending problem just to add another line that there is exactly one convex quadrilateral. Uh, that is because the, con uh, the converse of angle AED and EDB are both uh, larger than 180 degrees, meaning that these two angles cannot be involved in other convex quadrilaterals. Okay, so uh, the next step, I divided, I basically divided the problem into three, four, two configurations, uh, a three, four, a three, four, two configuration, a four, three, one configuration, and a three, three, two configuration. So first, the uh, three, four, two configuration, we basically consider this configuration, and by lemma three point one point two just now, we can see that uh, there must we can divide uh, the outer areas into. A1, A2, A3, and A4. So uh, since there must be two convex quadrilaterals formed uh, by the middle two points and two of the outside points on each side, if any point lies in here uh, without loss of generality, A3, uh, A1 or A2, then a convex pentagon would be formed. But if it's in A3 or A4, then uh, well, we would have two points in one of A3 and A4. And if those two points form a line that crosses any part of this uh, quadrilateral, then it would violate the, uh, the original definition of the 3-4-2 configuration, because the three point is supposed to form a convex hull. So uh, we would be able to prove that by the limitations of angles again, that no two, uh, the two points along with three points inside, uh, one of the points inside, two of the points on this for configuration would be able to form a convex pentagon. Okay, next the three three two configuration. So again, we decide the outer area by uh, three areas. So if anything is in A two, again we have a convex pentagon. So if two of the points must be in either A one or A three, and again by the limitation of the convex hull, we again have uh, a convex pentagon because they cannot cross through any of the uh, any part of the triangle. And lastly, the 431 configuration, we divide the outer areas into A1, A2, and A3 like that. So uh, there would be two points in one of the areas which would form a convex pentagon again. OK, so we have proved that uh, S5 equals 9 because the 431 configuration has 432 and 441 configurations in it. The 332 configuration proves the 333 configuration, and the 342 configuration proves itself. And this exhausts all the possibilities. So uh, 431 and 332 configuration only has eight points, but they are suffi uh, suffice to guarantee a convex pentagon. But the other two configurations are not, as seen by actual constructions. Uh, this one is one of the four, uh, 341 counterexamples. And this is a 44 counterexample. So we have uh, reestablished the result of F5 equals to 9 using a purely geometric approach, and it will provide an alternative perspective into viewing this combinatorial geometry problem, uh, and perhaps few other cases of the problem geometrically in the future. And we have explored configurations in which the lower bound is not sharp, and uh, it can possibly generalize new aspects of the problem. And these are the references that I used. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much.